treasure maps. Oh, here we go. San Giovanni San Marco. Hmm, I should, I should buy these. Yes. And that, yes. Don't so, forget to send your friends. I won't actually record me going after all the loot, but there is a lot of loot. And now that I have the map, you can you can see where all the loot is, which is great. But I'm not going to uh why would you keep jumping? But I'm not gonna do that on, on video because that's gonna be quite boring for you guys to watch. I will do that. I will find all the loot eventually. That's a that's a feather there. You see that little thing in the in the distance? I don't think the game tells you where the feathers are, but you can kind of see the clues from quite far away. So they made the I mean if you remember the flags in the in the last game, they were kind of a pain to find because you really had no clues as to where they were. So in this game the loot is... there's still quite a bit of loot for you to, to pick up, but it's a bit easier... No, what are you... It's a bit easier for you to um, find it. That's what I wanted. Uh, now what? Now I have to get up there. And as with the last game, I'm not gonna, you know, make a video of me looking for loot because you know it's not really interesting for you to watch me just you know run around the city for hours and hours and hours looking for things to pick up but if I see loot I'll pick it up alright let's do that there one out of 100 feathers 100 feathers guys so there's a tower there what's that oh it's, a, it's an older church alright Let's go pick that up. And oh, it's, it's down here. I do miss killing the Templars though. That was kind of fun. Although after a while I couldn't find any. So the eye icon, you see that on the top right, the red eye icon, it means there's a symbol here for us to find if we just do that. What's well, not on the front of the church. I guess I find these as well. There's only 20 of them, and they're marked out. So the building that they're in is marked out in the game. So I guess I'll, I'll do that. I think this one might actually be inside here. Uh, did you guys see that? Is, is that it? Oh, no, that's the moon, my bad. That's the moon up there. Eagle vision on or off? Yeah, I know. I've got it on. Uh, it's not on the interior walls. It's actually, is it? No. Like, you see that little blue baby there? Like, these are all... like <laughs> A blue baby, it seems strange, right? That's actually how it is in real life. Like, in, in the real world. I think this is a hospital. I think this is one of the um, earliest hospitals in the Renaissance. And you know, the hospital, you might not think they're all that important or all that interesting, but you know, the idea that, that the city kind of provides healthcare for its citizens, it, it's, uh, it's something that, you know, even in, in, in our time, you only find that in, in more advanced countries, right? In more developed countries, the idea that you know the city provides healthcare, whereas you know in less developed countries, you know if you get sick, then then good luck to you, right? You either die or you don't. So you know back in the Renaissance, that's also the case. You know as as city governments become more developed, oh, that's a feather there. Yeah, city governments become more developed and you know more organized. Things like hospitals began to appear again, like in the city. Although you know, in the f in the last game, we remember the the Knights Hospitalia, like the the church provided shelter and and care for pilgrims going to the Holy Land. 
But that's no, that's pilgrims going to the Holy Land. But here it's like inside your own cities. Hold. Okay, never mind. The past. A vast web of connections and interconnections, all ruled by chance. Or is it? And you know, back in, in the Roman Empire, there's a lot of civic buildings. There would be, you know, bathhouses and, and whatnot. Alright. So we've got to turn these. You know, there'd be public bathhouses and... and other... You know, public services, as it were. And that's because the Roman Empire was quite well organized, right? And so it can provide these services to citizens. And you know, it's a. Uh, I know. Different op people might have different opinions about things like public health care and whatnot. But the, the point is that, like, these things. Like, a, a doctor is a specialist, right? A doctor, one doctor can heal a lot of people. If he kind of, you know, if he works all day. You know, and a doctor, like, it's, it's a very specialized thing. You have to kind of study a long time to become a good doctor and then you can but once you are a good doctor you can apply those skills to help a lot of people so it makes sense for there to be you know a hospital in a city because the doctors there can help a lot of people but then it takes a lot of people to actually pay for a doctor as it were because you know it, it's kind of expensive to study and train to become a doctor and so it's one of these things where it only makes sense where there's a lot of people like if you're in a, in a small village you know, that there's not much point in someone knowing how to do brain surgery there because you might not get a brain tumor for decades and like, like, that skill is not being used very well. Whereas if you're in a city with a million people in it and you know how to do brain surgery, that might make more sense because there's so many people that there's a good chance that somebody will need brain surgery at some time, you know, because it's just more people. So it's, it's because it's such a specialized skill, it, it makes sense to, to do that only where there's a lot of people who need that uh, skill, as it were. Does that make sense? Am I like explaining this properly? <laughs> anyway, we've unlocked another bit of that. Let's just go back. And what were we doing? We were doing the... Oh, viewpoint, that's right. And you know, back in the Renaissance, there were other things too, like that in the Dark Ages, a lot of the knowledge that was accumulated in the Roman period were lost because the Roman Empire collapsed, right? And um, and because the you know because the empire collapsed, there was less use for this specialist knowledge because the people were all all split up and scattered. And so a lot, a lot of this stuff was lost until the Renaissance, and they kind of rediscovered it. Partly because the uh, the Muslims kind of, once they got their act together and conquered a lot of the old Byzantine Empire, they brought back the knowledge from from Byzantium, and they also brought back the knowledge that used to be in like Egypt, in Alexandria, and in the, you know, in the Middle East, because the, the Roman Empire was in the Middle East as well. But you know, with the with the Catholics in the West, and then with the uh, with the Byzantine Church in the middle, and then the Muslims down in the, down the east and towards the south, like everybody was kind of split up, and then. If there's not communication, then the, the knowledge kind of gets split up as well. 
but after a while they, they managed to you know, translate the old texts and, and get the communications going again and and that was partly why the renaissance happened too like the, the knowledge got I mean there were there were a number of factors that led to the renaissance and that was one of them like the knowledge was you know brought back and translated where it was lost you know in the, in the dark ages the Europeans kind of didn't keep the records <laughs> as well as the Muslims did uh we don't need these guys though thieves no I don't want to look at thieves I want to look at the map uh all right so the next viewpoint is there I'm just I'm just talking about this off the top of my head from my memory I can I should probably look this stuff up again like in Wikipedia and just go look at the Renaissance in Wikipedia and do a better you know job explaining this stuff again the history and the context and why the Renaissance happened I might be missing stuff or like kind of getting a little bit wrong just going from memory all right so let's do that as well when we quote unquote look at the architecture we'll look at a brief history of the renaissance as well why it happened how it happened and when it happened in a lot of ways huh. yeah i'm not sure if the, if the time and the, and the city is correct like some of these buildings seem like maybe it's correct I'm not sure like that statue back at the uh, the square earlier how they were like a, a like the baroque period came after the renaissance it seems like there was like a baroque statue in that square even though it's like 14 or something which is early in the renaissance so stuff like that doesn't really make much too much sense unless it's like a an old you know greek or roman statue probably roman statue actually unless it actually was you know, an old Roman statue and not a, a Baroque statue which might be possible maybe, maybe that, that maybe that is what it is uh... huh there's a thing there there's a piece of the codex that way let's go that way actually, should we be looting more people? just because uh... how do I, how do I loot people? Like this? Just because, you know, I want more money. Ah, get looted. Get looted. I'm not sure if I should be doing that. I'm not sure if I'll need more money or not. There's no beggars. <laughs> That's so strange. Like in the first game, there's beggars everywhere and I just have no money. And in this game, I have money now. I actually have money. And there's no beggars anymore. Crazy. It was so annoying in that first game. You don't understand. I'm poor, I'm hungry, I got no money. I got no money. No, I've got no money. Stupid beggars. Alright, we need to find this page. The page is in here somewhere. It's inside. And there's guards guarding it. I know that. So, how do I get in here? How many guards are there? And all right, let's just wait until they're gone. Let's just have a look at that. There's three guards there, and the page is inside. Crap! Oh, crap! 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 Sit down! Sit down! All right, sit down. So there's three guards there. There's the patrolling guys, and then um, what's the best way to do this? I know that the tall one. Stab him. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. No, can I fight, please? Okay, good. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Can I not counter with my blade? No, I can't counter with my blade. It's not really working, is it? Okay, I can't counter with the blade. But I can hit them. Oh wait, I did counter my blade. 
Maybe he just got the timing wrong. Let me try this timing out. No. No, that's not that's not the right timing. Alright, this is So you can fight with the blade. Not really count if it's okay, I can just spam that. No, no, that's not countering. Alright, I'm pretty sure we should be able to. No. Oh, you can counter. Today's final bonfire is still an hour away. It's just the timing is is, is different from the sword. I think the timing on the counter is tighter than if you're using the sword. I think that's what the problem is. Anyway. Codex page. That means we can go back to... Leonardo, I think. Except... I don't know where he is. Is that him? That's him, right? That guy there. Alright, let's go get the other two viewpoints and then go find Leonardo. No, not the Ninja Turtle. Noble prices for noble way. Leonardo the artist. The, the, the historical character. 